Many of us use security cameras and baby monitors to be safe. But who else is watching? In a special report, WPDE ABC 15's Amanda Kinseth finds out whether your security camera could actually be a security breach. Rebecca Kipp is a new mom, a working mom. Her son, Christopher, is five months old now. On most days, she's lucky enough to be able to bring her bundle of joy to work with her at the Pink Pineapple Bakery, juggling her time between bouncing a baby and bagging baked goods. Sometimes baby Kip stays home with daddy when mommy goes to work. And it's just almost like you miss the noise and the, and the just constant checking on him and everything. But she can still check on him through her cell phone, which links to their baby monitor. It's great that I can do that on my cell phone. You just download the app and then the monitor we have rotates really well. In fact, Rebecca uses cameras to keep an eye on her other baby too, her bakery. This is, this is my firstborn, his right here. So anything that I can do to keep it safe or keep it secure. Because of their accessibility and ease of setup, baby monitors and security cameras are becoming increasingly popular. People like to use them, whether they're away from their business, away from their home, or just away from the nursery. It's nice to look at his face and be like, oh no, he's just playing. Or, oh no, run upstairs. The question is, what if someone else is looking in? At first you think, well, if I can see it, why can't anybody else see it? And it can happen. It does happen. There's even a website devoted to exposing unsecured surveillance cameras around the world. You can see buildings, businesses, bars, and bedrooms. The Instacam website includes cameras right here in South Carolina, a back patio in Columbia, a warehouse in Greenville, and in some cases, you can even take control and rotate the camera. The site says the cameras aren't hacked, they just don't have any password protection. Joshua Kipp is the Assistant Vice President of Engineering at RF Communications Design. He's an internet guru who installs security cameras, so he's here to tell us how to protect your privacy. It starts with your home router. If your home router security password or whatever, your friends come over to you, hey, what's your Wi-Fi password? If it's something small and easy to remember um, or small in length, it's usually easier to crack. So you don't just need to change your default password, you need to change it to a secure password. When Google asks you if, hey, we need you to type in a better password, if, if you've ever been denied a password and that's really annoying, it's for a good reason. The more letters, numbers, and punctuation, the better. Kip introduces us to a website that tells you exactly how strong your password really is. It's called howsecureismypassword.net. My go-to password needs some work. It could likely be hacked in 19 seconds. As for Kip, it would take a desktop PC 204 trillion years to crack his code. And that's of particular importance to him as of five months ago. Baby Christopher is his son, and he doesn't want anyone spying on his little man. Yes, um, that, that was a, that was, that's kind of scary. Uh, the last thing I want to happen is for someone to be able to do that to my family. For these parents, the convenience of a camera outweighs the risk. It just completely overshadows. I may have doubt somebody may be looking at him, but to think that if I, that was enough to stop me from being able to see him or being able to monitor him, it's more important to me to see him, hear him, be able to check on him when I'm at work. And because there are people smart enough to peer into your personal life, just make sure you have a secure password. Your privacy depends on it. Amanda Kinsett, ABC 15. A young Polly's Island woman put on a parachute and jumped out of a plane yesterday. By young, I mean 91. WPDE News Channel 15's Joel Allen and videographer George Ramos show us a woman whose its spirit of adventure has not diminished with age. Last year on Gwen Watson's 90th birthday, someone asked her, what do you want to do next year? And Gwen said, go skydiving. And so I just, this kind of came out of my mouth. Uh, Gwen, for your 91st birthday, I'll take you skydiving, thinking that there's no chance that, that would ever happen. Here's a lesson. Do not underestimate Gwen. And so a year later, Gwen and her pastor got some quick training, strapped on the parachute. The most important thing, okay? Smiling and having fun. 
and prepared for the bucket list adventure of a lifetime. Well, it's something I've always wanted to do. And I thought if I wait any longer, I probably won't be able to do it. Gwen is by far the oldest person that skydiving instructor Michael Stone has ever taken up. And it's great to be able to share something that was a passion in my life with something or somebody else. Gwen's exploits from 10,000 feet attracted a crowd to the Andrews Airport, including two slightly nervous daughters. She has always had a spirit of adventure, and she's done things that maybe other people would think were not age appropriate, so this is not unusual for her. Finally, the time had come for Gwen to take her two mile high leap into the unknown. After a brief less than five minute ride, Gwen and Michael made a gentle landing back on planet Earth. That was wonderful. Yes. That's great. Thank you, Lord, for letting me do that. And thank you, Gwen, for being such an inspiration. In Andrews, Joel Allen, WPDE, News Channel 15. Something fun growing at Thompson Farm just outside of Conway. We sent ABC 15's Jack Lamson out to the farm to get lost in this year's corn maze. We may still be a couple months and just a few degrees away from fall, but the folks out at Thompson Farms just outside Conway are already busy. Here. We actually planted this corn the... Um, the last week in June. Last year's corn maze was the biggest in the state, and this year it's even bigger. So if you flew over in an airplane right now, it would look just like it's going to look in October, but it's just uh, about six feet shorter. Check this out. Most of the time, corn is only planted in one direction, but out here at Thompson Farms, they've got it going two ways, and that means once this knee-high corn grows to its full height, it'll be super dense, making it easy to get lost. Just because the corn is short doesn't mean you don't run into some dead ends. But Thompson says getting lost is all part of the fun. I always enjoyed playing in the cornfields, you know, when I was a child. I'm just trying to provide an outlet in the fall to come get your pumpkins and enjoy a, a nice family fun day, you know, with, with your children and your family. All that's left to do now is wait for the corn to grow. In Horry County, Jack Lamson, ABC 15 News.